Friends, welcome to the Viral Mail Show. My name is Manuel Amunatik. In this video, I want to celebrate the candlestick to see how we can use a candlestick as probably the most powerful indicator. I would take candlesticks over any uh, moving averages or oscillator-based indicators any day. Though Don't get me wrong, I like my indicators as well, as you know from my videos. But here I want to show you how powerful a candlestick can be. And I'm talking about complex, you know, uh, uh, Japanese patterns like, you know, bullish, all, all these composed things. And these are good too, I think. Uh, I am talking about just looking at the, bar, at the single candlestick and history as well as the VPVR, I love the VPVR, it's here on the side, I'll talk about that in a second, to kind of understand where you are and whether you should be more bullish or more bearish. I do actually take trades based off, off uh, uh, these signals, um, and I'll talk about that here um, in, in, in more detail. Again, this is all entertainment, uh, yeah, this is not financial advice, um, uh, but uh, I, I just love uh, candlesticks, and I think it's something that is uh, the art of looking at, at, the, at the history and looking at hindsight so that you know, eventually you, you, you understand how things happen in a particular market, a particular time period can help you down the road have a, a higher probability guess of what's going to happen next. Again, it's all guesses, right? But um, before we start, please leave the video some thumbs up. You know, we're all on the same page. We show each other the love, uh, make these videos. You say you like them with a thumbs up and it's going to make me, you know, encourage me to make more videos. And I will make more videos like this where I'm kind of talking about what's going on through my mind as I trade these markets. I've been trading for years actually since the late 1990s i've seen many different markets i've, I've traded different instruments both quantitatively uh, automated trading high frequency trading and options and now i'm really liking uh discretionary trading in crypto uh and you know with, with with a small amount because i know it's risky it's volatile remember we're gambling here you could lose everything always remember that uh, but right now here we're looking at uh bitcoin 30 minute chart. I like the 30 minute chart right now. It's a good chart for these times. Uh, anything uh, at a faster time frame is just bad. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lack of volatility and it's just tough. To, it's a tough markets to, to, to navigate in. Even maybe a four hour daily might be even better. But we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about these candlesticks. So right off the bat, I just want to look at um, the candlestick itself. I'm not interested in, in, in these complex Japanese or Steve Nissan style patterns. I just want to look at the candlestick. Right off the bat, let's pick one here, right? Here is red one. This red one tells you we had a temporary top. Uh, the bears are in control, right? A lot of reds, weak greens, a lot of reds, weak greens. So this tells you uh, okay, uh, this may be a decent time to go short because you're having a double top, uh, and you know you maybe you you know, a, a few ticks here. It's not great, but this this tells you that it opened here, it went down here, the direction of the market. Though the bulls try to break it out and they fail, so it clearly tells you uh, very strong that the the bears are in control, which is very you know which which kind of confirms everything you see here. So just that, looking at a single candle and a history, it kind of tells you. You don't want to be leading bear bullish here. The main main message here is don't go long here. Don't go long here, right? The bears are still in control, and they're in control here. Don't go long here, right? Because the bears are in control. Now, these are hard to predict. This is more like breakout traders. I don't do that, unfortunately. I wish I could predict this. I'd be, you know, talking to you from my yacht. But then it pumps up, and that becomes a new piece of information that you can lean on, right? So we're looking at the history, leaning on it, and now it tells us, oh, the bears may not be in control anymore, right? Now you can start looking at longs. Now, I don't trade breakouts, but uh, that kind of tells you it's changing, right? It kind of negates all these sellers that were here, just this little pattern here. Right, so that's what I want to talk about, and you know, as in a, as is the the case in a, a lot of these, uh, we we remember our mistakes more than we remember our successes, unfortunately, and this is exactly what happened here. So I remember one particular mistake I did here, but it's very telling for this style of approach, and it's I'm, I'm even surprised because I do look at this all the time, and I, I kind of failed to um, to look at here, but I went along right around here. Okay, so let's talk about this. What's really cool about the VPVR. Uh, which is the uh, right the this vertical volume is that you can slide back and forth and you see the levels of just what's visible. So in a way, you can go back in time to see exactly what you were seeing. And this is exactly what I was seeing at this time. There was clearly a control here. This basically, the VP, for those who don't know how to use a VP, VPVR, I have a video on it. Um, it's only available in the paid accounts, but in my video, I show you how to get it for free uh, through an indicator, which does a, a really good job as well. But what this tells you is that it's kind of in, in, in market profile trading. It tells you, uh, this is the profile for everything that's visible, only what's visible. And you see the most volume was traded right here. So the most popular price, and what we're looking at is 33,800 uh, and some, right? This is the very popular price. So I was leaning on this. So here we are, right? 
uh, the markets, there were some bears in control here, and then it chops forever, right? So this is important zone, right? This is like chop zone. Let's, let's, let's highlight this. Choppy, choppy, choppy. And then the bulls get into control, right? Very important. The bulls are in control. So don't go short here because you clearly see the bulls are in control. Uh, these might be potential longs, uh, but um, they're in control. And look at that. The bears try to fight back. They're weak. The bulls are again in control. So all this just tells you, yep, long, long, don't go short. Um, same thing here. Here's more meandering going on. And then we go down. So let me go back to where I was right around here. I saw these long tails. Remember, uh, here's a candle thing, right? This, this, this is bullish when you have uh, a long tail at the bottom, bearish uh, when you have a long tail at the top, right? Gravestone, dodgy, they call them here, a hammer for bullish, gravestones, a grave, gravestone or shooting star for bearish, right? Again, I don't want to get into the, this whole uh, uh, Japanese candlestick stuff, but it tells you kind of the direction of the mark here clear, clearly, right? We can see this, this this candle with this huge tail kind of right off the bat tells you, oh, watch out. The bulls may be getting strength. Again, you're not going to take a long here because this to me says don't touch this, right? This is danger here. And in a way it is because it's very choppy that way. But uh, that's what that's what it, that's what the, uh, reading these candles tell you. So I decided to go long here. I think my idea was that I felt the bulls were still in control just because the bars were really pretty uh, for the bulls and they were ugly for the bears. And I went in around here. And I also looked at the VPVR. This is a strong popular price. So I said, okay, it's probably gonna bounce and keep going up. I was wrong. In hindsight, of course, I was completely wrong, right? Um, and uh, if you're gonna do a trade like that, if you felt like, oh, uh, let's go back to where we were. If you felt like, okay, there's gonna be a double bottom with here, so I could try to take this long, and you see this choppy zone, don't go long here. At the very least, you know, do an asymmetrical trading. Try to get in where they have a high probability if it does hit, that it's gonna go up. And we'll be trading at the bottom of this chop range. Hopefully these buy these strong buyers will come back in. And they kind of did. They came back in this area, they fought, but they lost, right? So so had I instead of going on here, had I gone here, I would have lost less money. I would have gone gone out earlier. I actually didn't lose money in the trade. I got out break even, but it took a lot of work. Actually, it took two days of work, and I hate doing that because they're, you know, you're just not sleeping well for two days, right? It's really tough. At least take it in the bottom of the range, right? So this is this illustrates what I think is a great exercise: is go back and look at not only your trades, but look at anything and lean on history. So again, we're doing hindsight stuff here, right? It's you know, Elon Musk can do a tweet uh, and it just throws all your technical analysis, all your candlestick patterns out the window instantly. There is uh, China bans uh, um, uh, Bitcoin mining. Trust me, your technical analysis is not going to predict that. Uh, it's just going to look really bad. Uh, but you can you can tell if, let's say, Elon Musk says something bad about Bitcoin and you're around here, you can say, okay, that confirms. We are, not only is it looking negative, but, you know, there was some negative news, right? So you definitely don't want to take longs here. And then maybe there was something and I missed that news. Always, another thing I do a lot is I on a twi on Twitter, I'll have a few, um, you know, uh, lists just for, for Bitcoin news and I also have one just for Elon Musk. So I want to know what, what that guy says because he can move markets. But one trade that could have been interesting here is using the extension tool. I love the Fib extension tool. They call it the Fib retracement, but I use it as an extension and I'll, I'll have my link on how I use it here. But basically I take a leg that's very important, the top here, and this, if you look at it historically, uh, in the VPVR, let's go here. This was an important area, right? You can see there's a lot of volume here uh, and it stopped here. I will take a 100% extension from that, that move, and actually I did take that trade, and I end up buying the bottom here, which is actually which is what helped me get out of my position here. I, I eventually managed to neutralize it and get out of break even. So uh, not, not two horrible days, but I got out of break even. I don't recommend people to do that, right? You really have to understand your risk management, meaning if you're willing to stay in the red for two days, you gotta make sure it's a very small, small position because then it can you know go against you. Uh, keep that in mind, right? So I'm not, I'm not, this is not um, a trading lesson. It's more about how I look at the markets to understand who's in control, right? Uh, I, uh, trading is so complex. It's so personality-based. And even after 20 years of trading, I still feel I'm learning every day, especially when you switch markets and you look at different things. So, uh, you know, best way to learn how to trade is to, you know, cancel all your plans on the weekends and spend 20 hours in front of the screen looking at charts. Screen time, screen time, screen time. That's the only way to do it, right? Don't don't follow people's methods or, or ideas, right? Use the, the information I'm giving you to then understand 
uh, uh, what's going on in whatever you're trading or whatever time frame you're trading. Understand that, and I promise you, you do that for a few weekends, you'll start getting more comfortable. Okay, I don't want to take any longs here because clearly these bars are as strong as this, right? That just It's just smelling funny. So if you want to take a long here, at the very least, take it at the bottom of that range, right? This is the kind of things you got to tell yourself, or even better, at the total bottom of your range, and that would have been actually a good trade, right? So if you had extended that box, and maybe actually, I didn't think about that, but maybe that really is the trading range, and that would have been okay, right? Don't be greedy. No, never overstay your welcome. If you take a long here, remember, there's this huge wall to fight back. There's no way it's going to go back up instantly against all this, but you can take a little, you know, a few a few short trades, right? If you're trading the 30-minute bar, uh, you know, stay, you know, an hour, two hours, right? That should be your max, and, and then get out. Okay, so uh, that's one thing. Clearly, we see after the fact, right, that would have been an, an, a quick trade for a quick little pump. I would have, uh, I actually, I, I, I was in here, so that did work for me, and I got out quickly because I did look at this history, right? That's something that tells you don't stay long, right? Maybe another thing you can do, again, with this incredible VPVR, uh, sorry, uh, extension tool, is you do this. Do, uh, right, look at, oftentimes when you have a big down leg, it's gonna retrace 50% up, right? So if I, I was long here, and it tells you, don't expect to go much higher here when the bears are in control, right? Again, I'm throwing some concepts at you. Just take bits and pieces and study them, study them, study them. There's no way around it, right? These, these uh, same thing here, right? Let me just remove everything because it's getting a little complex. There's a few more things I want to show you. So uh, here, another one here, right? Look at this leg, right? Up, let's take the 50% of that leg, right? Here to here. This will tell you, right? Never expect, and you say you went long here. You're kind of crazy because you went long here. Uh, don't expect to go beyond this point because especially uh, 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 the bears are in control. And look at that. It didn't even allow it here, right? It said, no, you're not. What it did do is if you take it from this leg, uh, okay, that doesn't work. If you went from this leg to this leg, right, go along here, that's a good advice. Get out here. Get out at 50% of that leg. Don't overstay your welcome, especially when, when, when the bears are in control. You're going to get hurt. Uh, one more thing I want to show you. No, there's a few more things. Look at this. So here you see bears are in control. Don't go long. Bears are still in control. Look at the size, how big and beautiful these red bars are. And look how weak the, the, the green bars are. Don't go long. Lots of wicks. Look at the, the, the bulls are trying to fight it and there's wicks everywhere, right? That just tells you that you don't want to go long, right? And I don't do shorts, so I really only go long in this market. So uh, this to me is just sit on your hands. Bears still in control, right? So it's, there's no long opportunity here, right? The only long opportunity would be to take what I call like a stink bit trade is taking an extension of this to here, or even if you want to be brave to here, right? And that would have been a decent one, right? Again, get out very quickly. I would have done the 50, 50 retracement of this. You, you should get out here, right? Which I probably would have been stopped out because I wouldn't have been comfortable. There's just too much uh, bear power here. Um, so bears are still in control. What's very interesting is this green candle here. This tells me that the bulls may be getting back into power. You have that you know typical double or triple bottom, depending on how you want to look at it. But bears, 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 you know, chop, chop, huge pump, right? So I don't trade these breakouts. I can't predict them. I have no idea how to predict something like that. If you can, you're probably on a yacht right now. But this, what this does, if you look at this, imagine this was a time frame, right? Instead of looking at 30-minute bars, we're looking at, what is it, like four hours or something, right? Just this bar right here. What do you think this bar, if this was just one single bar, what do you think it would look like? Think about this, right? Red, chop, 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 chop green. It would look like a bullish hammer. It would look like this, right? A bullish hammer. So this whole thing says, okay, we can start thinking about taking longs, right? Uh, you know, um, not super easy, right? But this, this kind of tells you, uh, I don't think the bears are in control anymore. Unfortunately, uh, we get up here and there's chop. The bears Sorry, the bulls can't push it up. It's a chop. And keep in mind, you always look at the history. What's the history here? We have a lot of selling, and here we have a wall of sellers, right? So that's going to be a tough one, really tough one for the, the bulls to break out of. Uh, and then you have this, right? This just tells you, yep, bears uh, uh, bears are still in control. And we're hitting back again this this bottom here. So now this could be at a, at a, at a higher time frame, maybe uh, a four-hour daily. This is going to be a double bottom. Bears are 
clearly in control and we're seeing tails now. So uh, one trade you could take, again, is uh, the stink bit trades. I take them all the time. This is kind of what I specialize in is here, right? Here to here, that would have been a quick quick trade, you no know, few, a little points. Here, when you see this wall of bears and you're taking this long as a stink bit trade, meaning that your, your, your limit order is already in, you leave it there because you not only get paid for order flow and it's cheaper than taking a market order, uh, so you get some money from being there and you quickly get out, right? So again, here, don't expect to, to go more higher up than 50% and it exactly gave you 50%. So you, you would have gotten the 50% of this leg. That's good. But looking at this to here, your next trade, in, in my opinion, would be the high to here. And if the, uh, the bears are still in control, I'll be looking at this price. This is where I will put a stink bit trade at 30.5, uh, right? 30,500, right? So again, uh, this is not trading advice, right? This is uh, uh, advice on how to use candlesticks, patterns, looking at where there are wicks up and down, seeing who's winning, who's losing, looking at the history to lean on, looking at the VPVR, and uh, uh, to kind of get your bearings, right? I'm not bullish here. Uh, it's not looking like it's, it, the bulls, the, 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 I think the bulls did a valiant effort to do this kind of double bottom here. It almost looks like a head and shoulders if you dig into that kind of stuff. Um, I don't really look at that stuff. But... Um, they made a, a really valiant effort, but they couldn't hit this old sellers here. They couldn't hit this old sellers here. Who knows? It may go up. It may go down. Who knows? Uh, it's the 15th of July. There's also tomorrow, 16th of July. There's a whole grayscale uh, um, coming to terms with some of their actions where some people, uh, their um, their shares will seem to be going, actually, I guess they can sell some of their grayscale uh, BTC shares. I don't know what's going on, but it means that tomorrow may be very volatile. It could go up and down. And that kind of stuff trumps technical analysis. So be aware when Elon talks. Be aware when the option expiration. Just be aware of these things and try to be lighter than you normally be so you don't get hurt. Again, leave the video some thumbs up. I hope you you you, uh, you like this kind of information. I'll do more videos on, on this kind of uh, uh, thinking uh, around the markets instead of doing these clear cuts um, indicator only type uh, videos, which I think is a bit of a disservice. Remember, an indicator, moving averages, oscillators are great. They are markers so you can lean. Again, a moving average here would also be another piece of history you can lean on. Don't use them as triggers. Uh, for me, I used my triggers are going to be these 100% uh, extensions. That's one thing I use as triggers. Uh, and I also use um, a VPVR, right? Another thing I'll use, I'll do, I can, you can do an extension on a VPVR, right? Take two important points, right? And this would be another one, this would be another one. And I'll, I'll play around with these extensions for short trades, depending on who's in control. If the bulls are in control, I'll stay a little longer. If the bears are in control, on I'll stay, I'll, my longs are gonna be a lot shorter. I don't trade the short uh, side. I've gotten hurt too many times. And we all know, everybody has a fear that, the, the, the fear or the hope that Bitcoin is gonna shoot up again. And once it shoots up, you don't wanna be short, right? So just be careful. Uh, okay, thumbs up and talk to you soon.